All right, so let's talk about Q3 fundraising halls for the 2020 Democratic Party primary contenders. Bernie Sanders, of course, had the best haul, as many of you know by now. But Elizabeth Warren and Andrew Yang also did fantastic. In fact, Andrew Yang did the best, at least with regard to greatest percentage increase. But let's get into all of that. So Bernie Sanders raised the most out of all the candidates with a whopping $25.3 million dollars followed by Elizabeth Warren with $24.6 million. And then Joe Biden actually came in fourth place, with even Pete Buttigieg surpassing him. Now, that is obviously not good. He's a former vice president. He has essentially been the frontrunner since he entered the race. So this is embarrassing, and it gets even worse when you factor in percentages, because Joe Biden had a 30% decrease, while <laughs> Buttigieg had a 23% decrease. Meanwhile, Bernie Sanders saw a 33% increase, and Yang saw a 257% increase. So Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Andrew Yang all are seeing really great news here. Joe Biden is probably the worst off. And if I'm on Team Joe Biden right now, if I worked for the campaign, now is the time when I'd officially start panicking. And it's not just because his fundraising was really low in Q3, but it's also because he is technically no longer the frontrunner. He has just been surpassed by Elizabeth Warren, albeit marginally, but nonetheless, she is ahead of him. It's still a statistical tie, but he is officially no longer the front runner. Now you also see a little bit of a dip here for Bernie Sanders. That definitely makes my heart hurt. But if I had to guess why that's happening, I'd say it's probably because of the heart attack that he had. Maybe that, you know, hurt him, but he could regain at the debate, you know, and Elizabeth Warren also saw similar dips and has since increased. So I'm not going to count Bernie Sanders out just yet. You know, the thing about Biden starting to fall as the front runner is that there were a lot of polls back from April, May that showed that a lot of his supporters would go to Bernie Sanders. So we don't know yet. We could look at, you know, a two-way race between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren still. Right now, it seems like it's going to be between um, Elizabeth Warren and uh, Joe Biden, but it's still super early. We know that there's a clear top three, Warren, Sanders, and Biden, and Andrew Yang, He's steadily rising, so I wouldn't count him out. And, um, you know, what's interesting to me is that we started to see inklings from the Biden campaign like a month or so ago that they were starting to lower their expectations, at least when it comes to Iowa, because, you know, they started to grasp the reality that he may not win Iowa. But now donors are starting to panic and they are really panicking because they have invested now millions upon millions of dollars into Joe Biden and He's flailing, and it doesn't seem like that's going to change anytime soon. Since his fundraising numbers are down, you know, since the revenue is obviously drying up because billionaires are starting to max out, this raises questions about the longevity of his campaign and whether or not it will be able to sustain itself because you need money to keep a campaign going. And he got a nice rush at the beginning, but now everyone who wanted to donate to him has maxed out and now he's left with uh, really nothing. So this is serious because when your donors start to panic, that's when your campaign starts to panic. And as Amy Parnes of The Hill writes, Democratic donors are increasingly expressing frustration with Joe Biden's presidential campaign, saying he's failed to make a clear rationale for why he's running for the White House. Donors complain that a string of verbal gaffes and inconsistent debate performances have contributed to a sense of worry about the strength of his candidacy. There's also some dissatisfaction with how the Biden camp has responded to a new series of attacks from President Trump, who has seen his own calls for Ukraine to investigate the former vice president turn into the impetus for an impeachment inquiry in the House. Look, let's be honest, he's a weak frontrunner, one major donor said. The dismal <laughs> poll numbers have added to a sense that the former vice president's campaign is on the decline, while Warren's in particular is on the rise. A lot of us are really concerned, another Democratic bundler said. We think Biden is the strongest out of the lot, but he hasn't exactly shown that he can play the part yet. Democratic strategist Brad Bannon said Biden's poor numbers suggest donors lack confidence in his campaign. Big money people who might favor Biden are investors, not gamblers or zealots. So the money is drying up, Bannon concluded. Warren and Sanders
Sanders have both gobbled up small dollar donors at a rate the Biden camp hasn't been able to contend with, putting more pressure on the former vice president's campaign to win support from big donors. So I love this story because the thing about relying on big donors is that, you know, there's a finite amount of big donors. However, when it comes to raising money by small grassroots donors, they're not going to max out anytime soon. Like me, I am donating $27 per month to Bernie Sanders campaign. If I get an email where he says, look, we need help. We need to, you know, boost our Q4 fundraising totals. I can easily chip in an extra $50 because I am in no way approaching that $2,700 threshold, right? And most Bernie Sanders supporters are the same. They could donate, you know, a dollar here, $10 there, $19, $27 here and there. And he'll be okay. But when it comes to Joe Biden, once you max out, you max out. You know, there's a ceiling. And that's what we're seeing. He's running into a ceiling here. And now there's not really anywhere left for him to go. He's not gaining any momentum. Um, in fact, the impeachment inquiry, where Biden's name has come up a lot, has raised questions about his corruption. Because let's face it, Joe Biden is an incredibly corrupt individual. And while it's not necessarily the case that he pressured, you know, uh, Ukraine to fire a prosecutor so that way they'd stop investigating Hunter Biden because he wasn't under investigation to begin with, that's still a conflict of interest. The fact that your son was earning that much money, that's nepotism, that's corruption. But Kyle Kalinske, to his credit of Secular Talk, did a great segment explaining how how is Joe Biden so incompetent? How are Democrats so incompetent that they can't easily spin, you know, Hunter Biden and nepotism into a story about Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner and their nepotism? They're incompetent. So Joe Biden does not know how to run a competent campaign. His team is absolutely now grasping and he's going down and um, he's no longer the front runner. There are a lot of holes in the sinking ship that is known as the Joe Biden and um once the donors lose confidence, you're pretty much done in DC if that's what you're going to rely on. Because again, if he was sustaining his campaign with small grassroots donors, that would be an entirely different story. But since that's not the case, since he has to beg for money in the Hamptons to billionaires and elites, well, um, there's only, only so many elites that are going to be willing to donate to you. And if they don't think that you are gaining any momentum, then even if they didn't max out, they might not necessarily feel inclined to donate to you. And, you know, Pete Buttigieg is kind of running into the same problem where he was in the Hamptons begging rich people for money. He has the most billionaire donors. And now he is struggling to raise money. But you see people like Andrew Yang, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren all excel because they are not begging billionaires for money. So that's really interesting, and it's really an important story. Joe Biden is officially no longer the front runner, and now the donors are starting to jump ship. That is an indication that the ship is sinking altogether. Um, so this is incredibly important. What we need to do now as Bernie Sanders supporters is drive home the argument about Bernie Sanders' electability, because a lot of people who were supporting Joe Biden, they did it, yes, because of name recognition and nostalgia for the Obama years, but a large part of the reason why they support Joe Biden was because they believed that he is the most electable, and currently polls do show that, but, you know, you can look at polls and head-to-head -head matchups between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, but understand that the writing is on the wall. Hillary Clinton was another moderate that was polling as well at this point in the race against the Republican, and she lost. So if you want someone who's going to win, if you want someone who's going to be the most electable, I think it's clear that that is Bernie Sanders. So now we need to capitalize on Joe Biden's sinking ship. You know, what is his loss should be our game if we play our cards right. So we need to go after those Biden voters and explain to them that if you really want someone who's going to beat Donald Trump and that's your number one priority, then Bernie Sanders he is receiving the most financial contributions in those districts that went from Obama to Trump in 2016. That's really important if you care about beating Donald Trump. So if we make that electability argument loud and proudly right now, we could have Bernie Sanders uh, see a rise. And if it comes down to a race between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, that would be great right? Because even though Elizabeth Warren is no Bernie Sanders, she's far better than the rest of the field. And, you know, 
Andrew Yang is not going anywhere anytime soon. So if we get to a race between Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Andrew Yang, um, I'm not going to be too mad about that. I'm still going to back Bernie 100%. But, you know, it's not like we're choosing between the worst and then someone who is worse than the worst. We're choosing between options that are actually pretty solid. Um, and that's good. So to see Joe Biden dip, uh, not only in the polls, but um, to see his donors lose confidence, this is a fantastic sign. And it's good for America because if he wins, there's a good chance that Donald Trump gets a second term. And I get that I'm basing this off of, you know, my own speculation, my own feelings currently because the numbers don't back that up. But if you read the room and know that America, we still are in this anti-establishment era where we don't trust elites, then know that Donald Trump will, you know, use that crooked Joe Biden line, the same thing that was really effective against Hillary Clinton, and he will beat Joe Biden over the head with it. And if Joe Biden were competent, he could easily flip it and make Donald Trump seem as if he's more corrupt because Donald Trump is, in fact, more corrupt. But, you know, I have no faith in Democrats and Joe Biden to do that. So the best case scenario is Joe Biden goes down in the primary and we see someone rise who can actually beat Donald Trump. And that's Bernie Sanders. But if Elizabeth Warren is able to surpass Donald Trump or Joe Biden in the primary, that's good news, too. Then we really make the case why Bernie Sanders is better than Elizabeth Warren. But to see Joe Biden sink ship like this so quickly... This is good news. He's not out of it yet, so don't discount him just yet. Don't, don't you know, overlook him. He's still a threat, but understand that this is a clear sign that the end may be near for uh, Biden 2020. And that is great news for the country. Yeah. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher. <laughs>